Now, it's an interesting discussion we're looking to have this morning, but it's from the premise of objectivity and absolute respect for the rule of law, despite the political dynamics that ensued in the tussle for power, especially at the state governorship level. Now, Edo State has become a hot spot in recent time with a fractured relationship between two men who once thought it wise to run as running mates and emerged as governor and deputy governor. Governor Godwin Obaseke and his deputy, Mr. Fuli Shoaibu, once had a beautiful relationship. But in recent times, many wonder, where did it go sour? Some persons also suggest that it might have been owing to the ambition of the deputy to run for the seat of governor. But should this have made someone who sees himself as his boss have grievances with him? Now, the court has also weighed in following a reinstatement of the deputy governor. But despite this, it has not also quelled or cemented the relationship between the two men. Now, this morning on the show, we have in our studio, Comrade Abdul Wahab Ekede, who is the Ekehide. Ekehide, who is the convener of Edo Consent Patriots. I, I like the association to start with, Consent Patriots of Edo State. It's good to have you in our studio this morning. Thank you very much, and good morning, viewers. Well, he is not alone. Despite not being in the studio, we're also joined virtually from Edo State this morning by Mr. Eneto Andrew, who is the member of Nigerian Civil Society. Hello, Mr. Andrew. Good morning to you. Can you hear us? Well, nice to have you join us on the show. Gentlemen and our viewers as well, let's begin with. The first part many Nigerians are worried, much like I said in my introduction, is where did it go, sir? Is it born of the ambition to run for the seat of governor? What happened? Where did this break down in a beautiful relationship that saw these two men emerge winners and victorious in an election now result to what we're having? Well, thank you so much. Let me give you a background. Uh, you know, if you are a follower of the Nigerian democracy and politics, and especially that of Edusti, you will realize that in 2016, when the dead governor, Comrade Adam Sushomole, wanted to leave power, he, he wanted Godwin Obaseki to succeed him and then uh, finish able to be his deputy. And then in that 2016, they won the elections. But you also know that in 2018, 2019, there was a challenge between the governor and then Adams, uh, even as national chairman of the party. And for the fact that even Philip Shaibu, including the governor, were all Adams boys. But they had to, Philip Shaibu, because of the love or something, I don't know, the relationship he had with the governor, he decided to part way with his godfather to follow the governor. So it tells you that they had a very beautiful relationship. Now, like you said, when Philip Schwab, we decatur the district, we don't know what happened behind the closed door, whether they had an agreement that he would succeed him, no. I am not aware of that. But he had an ambition, and every young man must be ambitious. He wanted to be governor. And once he started making moves to be governor, you saw it was on the, on, on television, on radio, or tele, on, on on the newspapers where the governor disagreed. That should be. You remember that the Philip Shabu had to even apologize to the governor because the governor said the only reason why he was accepted by is for him to drop his ambition to contest governor. It was on the public view. It wasn't something. So it is the the problem they are having today. Is as a result of the fact that Philip Schwabu wanted to exercise his democratic right to contest, to aspire to the position of governor of Edo State. That's the problem. Thank you very much, Comrade Abdul Wahab, for citing the background into this conversation. Let's get your thoughts, Mr. Andrew. Do you much agree with Comrade Abdul Wahab on this position that it might have been the role of Godfatherism and ambitions that has led to this fractured relationship as we're seeing between the governor and his deputy? Oshomole Joy was part of the people that fought Godfatherism in the Do State. So he is trying to him trying to assume the role of Godfatherism in the Do State. In this time, I do state, it's it's, it's just wasting his time, it's a thing of the past. For instance, of Philip uh, it is not because uh, uh, this station, I cherish this station so much. I don't want to actually discuss about Philip Shaibu because his matter is not even relevant to us in the Do State right now. But, but he's the deputy governor. He's not a deputy governor, he's, a, he's an impeached deputy governor. He's not, he's not even in the political equation. Philip Shaibu has never won his fully unity, he has never won his word. 
It doesn't. We we. Okay, if I want to go to the genesis of the situ of the situation that happened, I'm on ground. I'm a grassroots person. Aside being a member of civil society organization, you should understand that Philip Shaibu ambition was just a selfish interest ambition for his own personal selfish and wicked agenda. We have three geopolitical zones in those states. Are you aware of that? Philip Shaibu has been a record of power in the last 20 years in the state. He's not the only most intelligent person. He's not the only most educated person. He's not the most handsome person. Is he the only person? Is he the only human being around to assume the record of power in those states? But he emerged on a joint ticket with the governor. The those state people voted in the pair. It was a pair of the governor and his deputy that were voted in by the pair of Edo people. So do you do you think that uh, the Edo people voted wrongly in that stance, owing to the fact that he has spent 20 years and in your position they perceive that he has not brought about impact in those 20 years? I'm actually like picked him, just like let me pick you to work with me, considering the fact that you've been at the corridor of power. We feel you. So, so if it's big God for that reason, no, it's not God for that reason. He was you said he picked him. He needed to be picked. He picked him. Yeah, of course, as the governor, you have the right to pick your deputy. So he picked him out of his full whip. He could have picked other people. I'm not saying he didn't make a favor by picking him as a deputy. In the real sense, Finish Abu was not even supposed to be the deputy governor when Obataki picked him. Obataki fought to make sure Finish Abu becomes the deputy governor. So Finish Abu should be grateful to him, he should be grateful to the people of Edo State. He's paying us back for the free will that we're giving to him. So what he's doing now is a bridge of trust for the people of Edo State. We really gave him a mandate. Finish Abu has been a nice president, he's been a house of Adelman, he's been a speaker, he's been a house of red, he's been a two times deputy governor. Yeah. What else do you want? I, I don't believe he's been speaker. We'll, we'll come to that in a bit. I don't believe he's been speaker, but we've heard your position. Let, 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 let's get let's get Comrade Abdul Wahab at this point to join in. Now we've heard some of the positions and assertions that Mr. Andrew has made. It, it's off the back of what he feels was a favor done to Mr. Philip by Mr. Obaseke, who many would consider in the state state of our democracy that the deputy and governor played some role in what the people said is their vote and choice. You know the kind of democracy we operate here. It's a joint ticket. In fact, you cannot be a candidate if you don't, you, if you don't have a deputy. You understand, you remember what happened in 2019 when uh, uh, Bayesa State, in fact, the APC, through the Lion, won that election. But because his deputy had challenges with his documentation, that's why he didn't become governor. He was already announced governor. So, so he sworn in. How, how, how important a deputy, is. a deputy is. Without a deputy, you can't even vie for the position of governor. So it's a joint ticket. And the people, when they are voting, sometimes people vote because of the deputy, some vote because of the governor. So you, you cannot you cannot downplay the role that, oh, he was, it was a joint ticket. People voted for Baseki and Philip Shaibu in 2016 and in 2020. So my brother, Andrew, let us put the things in perspective. Now, there's a statement he made. Philip Schwabu has never been Speaker of the Edo State House of Assembly. He was Majority Leader. He was not a Speaker of the House. He has never been Speaker. He only went from there, he went to the House of Reps before he came to become a Deputy Governor. And he said Philip Schwabu had been in the corridors of power for the past 20 years. I tell you, the current Deputy Governorship candidate of the PDP, Osarodi Oge, has been in the corridor of power since 1999. As we speak, he's the deputy governor. He has been, yes, he has been commissioner. He has been SS. He has been, he has been chief of staff. The governor Adams there. He has, his SSG now. He's deputy governor. Is he the only one in Edo State? That's the question we should be asking. Is he the only one since 1999? He has been in the corridors of power, of Sarodiogi. And you understand? So he's the deputy governor today. So what is what is Mr. Andrew telling us about Philip Shabu spending 20 years? This man has spent over 20 years in power since 1999. Has been. And, now, come in, Abdul Wahab. Hold your thoughts. We'll come back to you. Uh, let's cross over back to Mr. Andrew. Uh, Mr. Andrew, it's from the position of a press release as issued by the Commissioner of Orientation and Communications in Edo State, Chris Osa. And is the header that draws to question the role of the respect of the rule of law despite a court judgment issued in Abuja. We see this press release this morning, and the subject reads, Edo government, Shuaibu impersonating deputy governor should be disregarded. Uh, let's, on, let's help help us understand that position, despite a court judgment. We seem not to be getting your audio. I, I just hope we can hear your on this end as well C could you take that take that again from 
something is wrong. Oh, okay. I think you might have erroneously muted your microphone. Check that your microphone is on muted so we can hear you. Now, whilst he looks to unmute his sound, let me just quickly peruse through some of the paragraphs of that circular. The subject reads, Edo government. Should I be impersonating deputy governor should be disregarded? It has come to the attention of the Edo state government that the former deputy governor, Comrade Philip Shoaibu, has been carrying out correspondence with different institutions and organizations, both within and outside the state, in a clear case of impersonation. In the interest of the safety of these organizations, we want to restate that Shoaibu is not the deputy governor of Edo state, and every correspondence from him in that regard should be disregarded and considered a forgery. The issue of his purported reinstatement is still active in court, and the next hearing for two separate motions filed by the state government and the Edo House of Assembly challenging the purported reinstatement by Justice James Omotoshan of the Federal High Court is fixed for 24th September 2024. The state, through the Attorney General of Edo State and the Edo State House of Assembly, by their lawyers, had in motion sought an order to, of stay for an execution of the purported reinstatement and an order suspending the judgment and restraining Shwaibu from parading himself or attending any official function as deputy governor. This is signed by Chris Osa, the Honorable Commissioner for yes. Communication and Orientation. Now, I, I believe you've seen this document and you also probably watched the address as issued by oh, Comrade Philip Shwaibu following the court Absolutely. order. L let's get your perspective Absolutely. on this. Now, this is the issue. Uh, that communication that was released by Philip Shaibu was not just released by Philip Shaibu, it was released by the Edo State people. As far as we are concerned in Edo State, Philip Shaibu remained impeached deputy governor. He should wait for the court to deliver their judgment. This, this should respect the rule of law. These are the things we're talking about in this country. You can't all of a sudden just wake up because of your selfish interest, you're overriding the rule of law, you're overriding judicial proceedings. There is already a case in court. Fine, you said the high court have reinstated you, but the case have been appealed. So you wait, let the appeal court deliver their judgment. So as far as we are concerned, you're no longer the deputy governor, so you stay aside. Anything that the is doing now is an impersonation. And it's not about to, to send him to jail. I don't even know why they are still wasting time, because I don't see the reason why Philip Shabu should still be parading himself on the street of Benin as deputy governor, although he can't even come to government out. So we're asking him time to time around about why is he your deputy governor? Is he in your house? Or in the marketplace because we don't know you as deputy governor in the state. Now, so anything that is anybody that is dealing with Philip is dealing with him in his own or on term, not not on not on, on the legal mandate. Now, now, Mr. Andrew, let's get your perspective because we did listen to some comments made by Comrade Philip Shwabu yesterday, and he made strong allegations of an alleged assassination attempt on his life that left one of his orderlies, a police officer, dead. I, I don't know how strong and weighty these allegations are, but you told us you've been on ground in Benin State. Are, are there anything to go by by that allegation? And indeed, was the life of an officer lost in this alleged assassination attempt? Well, you and I know that. You and I, you're already aware that Philip Shaibu is a politician. He plays games a lot. So anything he wants to say is going to be something. He, he, he likes whipping sentiment for his own personal gain, for his own selfish interest. So we are he says, and this way, so he's style of governor. So it's not today we know him. Philip Shaibu have been in the other political party, the Democratic Party, when he was the governor, before he decamped to APC. So saying that his life was under assassination, you know that he's, a, he's just a format. What evidence does he have? As he stands right now, being a member of the civil society organization, they have reports, there are evidence, there are pictorial views of, uh, of, the, of the, the tasks that he imported into the state. If there was anything to write to my but most, most of those things, I will be even shot by his guys. I can send you pictorial pictures, evidence of most of the thoughts that, that works with him. That are are this, are this concerns those of yours also are, been reported to law enforcement? This evidence you say you have, has it been reported to law enforcement as a member I, of the civil society? Of course. They have been declared, they have been declared wanted by the state. I can send you pictorial evidence. Oh, we'd like we to have, have them as well. Well, Hold your thoughts. We'd like to have them as well. And if we can do, let's, let's have them and so we'll look at them together. Now, back to you, Comrade Absolutely. Abdul Wahab. These are developments, and he's saying that despite those somewhat substantiated claims by Comrade Philip Shwaibu on attempts on his life, that it might be still gimmicks in the workings of what political actors deploy to whip up public sentiments. Do you agree or do you disagree? No, no, no. I disagree with him. You know why? You see, uh, Mr. Andrew might not know me, but I know he's a member of the People's Democratic Party. 
Forget the civil society slow guys. He's, he's a member of the People's Democratic Party. So, so you party. think his position is yeah, he's, he's, on it? Yeah, he's biased. He's very biased. He's, you can see even from his uh, assertion. But, but let, let, me, let, have, let, have let, let me let me let me call. Let me let me put him to order. Let me just put him to order. Let me tell you, who should obey court? There is a court judgment. Jo a judgment that was passed by a, a judge of the court to say Finishwabu is now the, the, is the, the he was wrongly impeached. Pending an appeal. Yeah, that he, he was wrongly but impeached. Court, and but that but the he is should is not the deputy the governor. That the police that that should case. give him all the paraphernalia of a deputy governor. And this same man came to Bini. Why? And on his way in the airport, some coolums attacked their convoy. They didn't kill his oddly. They killed the oddly of, 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 of our governorship go go candidate go. of APC. So it was the setting. Mr. Andrew, just hold on a bit. We'll, we'll come back to you in a bit. Just hold your thoughts. Let's get it. We're getting some records that were not quietly made clear to the media. We'll come back to you. Now, just to go back on the point you made. So it was not the oddly of Philip Shrabi that, that was killed. That was, but someone was indeed it, killed. Yeah, it was the oddly of the governorship candidate of the APC, Senator Mondi Pueblo, that was killed. And this uh, was on well, his yeah, return from the airport. Yeah, he Pueblo came to the airport to actually receive welcome, welcome Philip Shaibu. That was how they were attacked. And that was how his oddly, a Mopo, was killed. The police is aware. It's from Benue State, one Mr. Uh, Onu. He was killed. He was a police inspector that was killed. Now, who should obey court judgment? You went on appeal. But is there a judgment to say, hold on to the... I'm not a lawyer, so I will not go into... Into the legal but, details. Uh, because they didn't, I didn't hear there's any other judgment to say, oh, let's start to score a man, or don't uh, force the judgment. You have only appeal. But the judgment that was given is still pending. It's still in force. You have not uh, vacated that judgment. Until you vacate the judgment, that is where that judgment is no longer in force. As we speak, by the eyes of the law, Philip Schwabu is the deputy governor of a state. state. Now, the deputy we'll governor. get legal perspectives to also find out the weight of the court's judgments pending this appeal that has now been filed. But let's come back to Mr. Andrew. Thanks That's to Comrade Abdul Wahab, the records are now being straightened in terms of the orderly that was killed. You earlier thought that it was more of a political gimmick to whip up sentiments. Now we hear that indeed the life of a Mopo was lost following that altercation and then shooting in, in, in Bini following uh, a welcome yeah. party to receive Comrade Shwaibu. Let's get to your thoughts you were looking to make whilst we're having that record strengthened. Now, now the life of a Mopo was lost. Now, the question you have to ask is who imported a talks that shot that bullet, if they said the life of a Mopo was, was we lost a Mopo, who imported the talks? But you told us earlier that you have pictures and evidence that you have submitted I'm to the police. Me, just give me a few seconds. It's already up. I've forwarded it to you. I've forwarded it right now. Okay, we'll, we'll look at it and, and, and I'll get your talk. Sure. Keep making your thoughts whilst, whilst I get feedback on these this. Guys I sent, these guys I just uploaded now. I just sent to you now. Who are these guys? Who are they working with? That's the question we have. What right does this guy have to hold AK-47? These are questions that should be asked. We are not kids in this game. We've been in this system for a long time. We've traveled around the old DC state. We've monitored elections, and we know the way these guys behave. You can't bring in talks to cause chaos in the state, and you create an accidental issue, and you want to hold it on the governor. God, well and good, we have CCTV camera at the airport and everywhere. So why haven't they been able to prove their case? If they know that they were sincere, if they know that what they were doing, if they know that their hands are clean, why have they not been able to prove the case? We've listed names of people. We've, li we've, we've given picture evidence. Uh, it's everywhere. I've sent it to you. Uh, now, Where Kamer, are those, Kamer, Kamer, you, you hear what uh, Mr. Andrew is saying in terms of the evidence at hand. He's alleging that those dogs were part of the welcome entourage. Now, he's also Actually, asking for CCTV he cameras has to be talks. reviewed. He has talks. No, nobody is saying. Now, the question you ask yourself, will you bring thoughts to come and attack you? To the extent of killing, even if you wanted to use it to play, okay, to the extent of killing somebody, do you get it? We like go and breed talk. It doesn't make any sense that I will hire talks. If I hire talks, it's enough for them to protect me and do all that. Will I hire talks to come and shoot me 
or shoot at my own oddly or shoot at my guest it, it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense it is because he was coming to it's resume as deputy US governor the governor and the governor US do not US want US him US. to resume as deputy governor you know, they said to what to, to attack them so well, that they say you don't have the right to enter and those things you are no longer the deputy governor even though a court have declared you that you are not the deputy, so we will not allow you to enter Edo State. This is the clear scenario. So it is, it was, you cannot be shooting yourself. Is it, is it logical but that I, you shoot yourself? It's not, not logical. Now, now. gentlemen, whilst, logical. whilst tensions are rising, let's digress a bit. Whilst tensions are rising in Edo States, what is the atmosphere in the build up to the off circle elections? We understand that the reinstatement has also. Kind of heated up the polity, but I'll get your thoughts now, Mr. Andrew. For the preparations of the off circle elections, in perspective of different political parties' preparation, is the issue at hand one that is as volatile as the state of the Edo people, in your words, in terms of their choice of the reinstatement? What's their perspective going into the off circle elections? Yeah, uh, going to the off circle election, you know, you know, one thing about the Edo election is this Edo election is a very volatile election, it's one election that looks like a national election. I may not have the most in an off cycle election because it's a very, Edo is a very unique state. This is the heartbeat of Nigeria, and we are not just called the heartbeat of Nigeria for, 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 for fancy. We are called the heartbeat of Nigeria because Edo is like at the center of this country, it's a state you pass through to every other region. You understand? And considering the fact our uniqueness, our unique nature, and our unique people, we are small, but we are very, I don't want to use the word volatile, it is one of the most political, subjugated states in Nigeria. That's why you see anytime there's an election in Edo state, you see, it's like, all eyes, the, the, the boss, everybody want to pay attention to the state to know what is happening here. Of course, the government, one of the, the responsibilities of the government is to ensure, of, is to ensure uh, uh, the security of life and property. And the government definitely want peace and tranquility in the state. No government wants his state to be ungovernable. But the truth is, the people that want to grab power by all, by, by, by all means at all costs, they will definitely want to create a chaos in the state so that they can grab power. But this is one thing we always make people to understand. And look, in an ideal society, can't we stay on issue-based campaign? What stops us from trying to stay on the position of electing a governor who has capacity, who has competence, who has compassion, who has character, who has credibility? These are the things that those people are preaching. And those people have stood their ground to say, look, in all the fairness, for peace and tranquility to win in any society, the place of justice, equity, and fairness should not be undermined. And these are the things that we've always preached over and over again, even more the civil society organization. That was what led to the emergence of a door central coming into the political equation to ensure that they are relevant so that the state can all be kind of, so everybody can feel that sense of belonging. Because we are all stakeholders in this project called a door state. Nobody is more important than the other in the door state. We want a state whereby you can assume the corridor of power without knowing anybody, even without having anybody at the back of your shoulder. That is what we are trying to preach. So now you're trying to make the state ungovernable by bringing lions and tigers. That is what the Edo people say. They don't work. Nobody is more important than any other person in this state. This state belongs to all of us. If you want to die, let us die together in this state. We are all shareholders. We are all stakeholders. That's what we're saying. Now, Felix, can, we all know that Felix, everyone, Oshomole, this thing they are doing is just hypocritical. They are not sincere with their thought. Oshomole never wanted Edo Central to be at the corridor of power. Philip said we never wanted somebody from Edo Central to get to the corridor of power. Now, they Mr. have wanted to get the power by all means. Mr. So Andrew. The Edo people that this thing backfired on them. Now they are fighting the Edo people. Now, Mr. Mr. Andrew, to I, I must thank you. Hold on. We'll come back to that. We digressed for a reason. I must thank you for bringing us up to speed on what many Nigerians agree as principle in our quest for democracy. That is that democracy Absolutely. can only thrive in Absolutely. an atmosphere of peace. That is one critical thing Thank you stated you. that we very much agree with you. I'll come back to the issue on ground. We'll look at some of those pictures that you sent in and shared with our viewers in a bit. But let me also get the perspective of Comrade Abdul Wahab. He said critical points which I believe is the tenets for attaining democracy. A peaceful atmosphere, no need for Godfatherism, no need for deploying talks or intimidating voters whilst going to the poll. Of second elections, 21st of September, is but a few, few weeks away, less than three weeks away, or more in terms of preparation. Do you agree that uh, Edo has always been volatile in his elections? And in looking for this peace and a peaceful conduct of elections, it almost feels like a Herculean task. Yes, I will, I will tell you that Edo is not an exception in Nigeria elections. 
during elections, there are tensions everywhere. That's how it is because it's a struggle for power. And the struggle for our power is not a tea party. It's something that there will be tension. So I know it's not an exception. But I wonder, what I want to tell you, they say he who, want, who goes to equity must come with clear hands. The problem we are having in Edo State today, let me tell you why Edo State is becoming so volatile. It is because of the attitude of the governor. The governor who, who ran out of APC to go to PDP, and they gave him welcome, he gave him an umbrella and a commodity, gave him the slot of governor and deputy. They, call, they took them, governor and deputy, and gave them their ticket. The same governor sidelined side all the legacy party members they met in PDP, from governors and from the party. That is the problem we are having. The fight we are seeing in those days, it is PDP versus PDP. The legacy PDP and Obaseki PDP. That is the problem. It is not an election between, between APC and PDP. It is an election between legacy PDP and Obaseki's PDP. That's what has happened. Now, Obaseki has gone. He says, he told us in 2020 that no man is God. But today he's playing God. He secretly went out of the party and brought out a stranger to be the governorship candidate. And he also now went to pick the uh, uh, an APC Tom PDP person that he came from APC to be and made him the deputy governor. You heard yesterday if you see the letter of Onosede Gabriel like Benedio resigning for PDP, he said, she said, she said, look, with the with the governor the governorship candidate and the deputy, they are not known to us. So who are we working for? Who are we working? so you see that the legacy oh, PDP are working against, against the Obaseki PDP. So the problem is that we leave them to fight. When they fight, they are fighting, we'll pass and collect the mandate. The mandate is for APC. Now, Mr. Andrew, any response to <laughs> Comrade Abdulwahab's <laughs> statements? I, I see you laughing already. Any response? <laughs> it's, it's my friend. That's why I'm laughing. He said the mandate is for APC. That's why I'm laughing. We are both comrades in the street, so we know what is September in the street. But we are, one thing is this. You know, uh, uh, the legacy, wait, 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 let, let's talk about, you know, Osarogioge oh, is one political leader in Edo State, that is the leader of both PDP, APC, Labour Party, SDP. He's one man in Edo State that you can boldly say you know who he is. He's one man that every single citizen of Edo State is so proud of. And that is because you want to remove political sentiment, actually. You know, Osarogioge is one political leader that has been able to build a brand for himself like the Tinubu kind of brand, you understand, that makes so many people across board. That is his nature. That's not to be, that's fact not to be disputed. But you and I know that. On the other hand, Osa uh, Okay, you talked about Mosa Gay. You know Mosa Gay wanted to be a deputy governor. Mr. Wahab, you and I as a comrade, if I present Mosa Gay to you and present Osa Gay to you, who are you going to pick among the two? Let's face facts. You understand? This is our state. No, you know no, that. No, we look, the best you have to. You have to be. Jo you talk about fairness. You talk about joy. You met people in the house. Why can't you pick? I'm, I'm, is there no? Is there no most idea that is a member of the legacy PDP? There was. There was Obade Hama who was to be the candidate in 2020 before Basaki came. Now, wouldn't you hold meeting with them and decide? Okay, I'll bring in the governor. You bring the deputy from the legacy. That's what you have completely sidelined the whole members of the legacy party. You sideline that it is no. not right, it is unfair. They, that is the problem you are having as a party. They have not been sidelined. It's unfair. Mr. They have not been sidelined. They have not they, been they have. The They are complaining. I don't first. But do you agree, I do first. Do you that is I do best. first. They just release white yeah, results. Go and show me a do what number are we? They just release white results. What is the number of a do in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the hierarchy? You are telling me go and check this what you check. Check the time result. Check white result. I check metal. It's a do number one. What is a do best? The statistic of the question. A do is one of the most is one of the viable investment destination in Nigeria today. In statistic of the question, a do is no longer a civil service state, but an industrial state. Our civil servant is the best in this country. Our educational sector is 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 is, is going at a very high rate. A high standard. Oh, those are theories. You are just theorizing. What is our grant? Gelegele Seaport, where is it? Alchi Airport, where is it? Industrial Park, where is it? These are things of us that promised us. Where are they? We need things we can feel, we can see. Where are they? Not MOUs, not a promise. We are but tired we of promises, my brother. Look, right, look gentlemen, for gentlemen, gentlemen, let's come we're to a tired. consensus as we look to move forward in we're this tired. debate. Let's come to a consensus, gentlemen. Now, one of the issues on ground, especially in terms of the joint ticket, which is part of the arguments with the breakdown relationship between 
the Edo governor, His Excellency, uh, Comrade Godwin Obaseki, and his deputy as well, is the fact that even in the list as published of candidates for the September 21st election, 17 of them, only one female aspirant, 16 male, is the joint ticket ship, as published by the electoral umpire INEC. And uh, it's becoming a conversation where most people are asking, hope your house is in order. Because when we take a look at this list, we see that some of the qualifications of the governorship candidates, some of them have YX certificates. Their deputies even have more certificates qualification in terms of BSc than them. For instance, even on that, the very first party on the list, Mr. Iere Kennedy has SSC as his highest qualification. His deputy, Mr. Bright, has an MSc. And in terms of what you said earlier, Mr. Andrew, in terms of being the brightest or Edo best, much like you told Comrade Abdul Wahab, how does this dynamic play out away from party affiliations in terms of giving the Edo people the best, like you're saying? Let's get your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Beautiful. I've always been, I, I know Mr. Wahab knows me very well, but I've always been on the side of truth and people that speak truth to power. And I've always stand on, on the fact that, look, equity, justice, and fairness must come to play. Capacity, competence, character, credibility, and empathy must be the order of the day in, in electing our leaders. Now, if you look at the question of things, we've gotten to a level in a those states that we've made mistakes at the national. I remember during Jonathan era, we insisted that even though uh, uh, Buari had Nepal B, we will vote for Buari. We voted PhD out in replacement for his Nepal B. You understand? We replaced the Nepal B with the PhD. But we're all regretting, we're all crying. 2024, 2023 election came in again, uh, 2020, uh, uh, last election. You, you know, people sit, although Chinubu already admitted that he knew we didn't vote for him. That mandate was stolen, but it's already the president. There's nothing we can do about it. So we have accepted the fact that he's our president. So we have to move on for the next four years. Mistake when he still has in the corridor power. And now we are crying again. When are we going to learn? So that's why we are telling adult people that look, let's put political and political, let's put political sentiment aside. Remove religious affiliation, remove cult cultural affiliation. Just ensure that the best candidate emerge for the interests of adult states. Because if adult state becomes uh, 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 a, a, a state to be reckoned with today, you and I will be proud that I am from a those state. So it's high time we allow political sentiment to go down the drain and put who is the best person fit for this job. Now, if you look at all the candidates, if they call, if you own a company and all these candidates submit their CV to you, look at their CV. Who are you going to pick to run your company? That's why I always stand. There. I always stay on my father. Look. We are stakeholder in this project called Edo State. So for me to impress somebody as a stakeholder who, or who, who is a part of a project, I should screen the best candidate to manage my project, to manage my company. Being a stakeholder in Edo State, Edo State is my project, it's my company. So whoever wants to govern me, I am the one employing the person. If you look at the candidates, of, look at all the candidates from PDP, APC, Labour Party, SDP, and the rest of them. Thank, thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for this analogy you just dropped. We'll come back to you again in a bit. This is an analogy that a lot of persons use, but when they get to the ballot, it almost feels as though they forget this analogy. This is one of the most objective things he has said. Looking at the candidates, it's more like presenting a CV. Some of them, the best qualifications they have is an SSC, a YEC. But the wealth of experience in terms of their impacts in the political sphere in those states Will probably place them as uh, godfathers in their own stead but he is saying submitting these cvs to edo people in terms of what he said edo best how do edo people choose the best ahead of this subsequent election let me tell you this election i always say it wherever i go it's going to be a referendum a referendum that nobody can play god in edo state if you are a devil and you want to present an angel to anybody Nobody will accept it because you are a devil. And they say best of the same feather flocks together. Now this, this is, is metaphorically. The, yeah, speaking. these are the mistakes we made we, in 2020. We said even in 2016, Adams has imposed Obasaki on Edo people. He was not supposed to be the governor. He was imposed. Then in 2020, he told us that that Adams that imposed him was play Godfather. So he doesn't want Godfather. Now today, he is now playing the worst of Godfather because single-handedly, he brought the governor, a deputy governorship candidate of the PDP. 
That is why you see the in-house fighting within the party. Now, what I tell you is that if today you want to check who the Edo people want, is somebody who has compassion, who has passion for them. That is the kind of governor Edo people want. They don't want a stranger who does not, who has not been part of the state. He doesn't come home. He doesn't know the needs of the people. He doesn't relate to the people. He has not invested in his people. So how do you, how do you, Unless somebody who does not know your challenge as your governor. That is the problem. That is the challenge before the PDP and their candidate. Okbebolo, more the senator, more the Okbebolo, he's on ground. He, before he even became a senator, before he came into a government position, he has been assisting his people. He has been building roads. He has been providing water. He has been building uh, health care facilities. He has been giving scholarship, education scholarship to his people. He has been empowering the people of Esa Centra, uh, Edo Centra even with his private money, as a private citizen. So today, the people know him more. And that is why, since 1999, in APC has never, won, has never won a Senate seat in Edo Central. But today, today, Senator Pabula is the Senator because of what he has been able to do for the people. So the people know him. They have seen him. They see what he's doing and the impact he's making on the lives of their people. That's why they gave him. He defeated the city Senator. To become senator. This is the first time APC is winning Senate in the Edo Central since 1999. So it tells you it is because of what he has done. That's why he is dear to the people. The people love him because he has always been there when they have issues. He's always there for them. But this man called us, he's from Esalan too, but he doesn't come home. If he comes, he gets to Benin and then get fly away. He doesn't come to even his uh, village, Ewo Himi. So the people cannot feel him. They have never felt it is because he wants to be governor now that he's going back to his village. So these are the criteria that those people want to use. Those who care for us is those who we care for. And we care for them by giving them our vote on the day of election. That is the challenge we are having in Edo State. The people of Edo State are resolute. To say that one, we didn't allow Adams to become godfather. We will not also allow uh, Obaseki to become godfather. And in this election, we are going to elect our own, who has been with us, who know our challenges, who have been helping us to solve some of our challenges. That is the person. And that is Senator Modi of Well, the campaigns are quite in order. Much following the publication of the final list of candidates by INEC, which was done on the 22nd of April, uh, that is why I did not intervene when uh, Comrade Abdul Wahab almost sounded as though he was campaigning. But the question now is, the campaigns are intensifying and many feel that the dynamics of campaigns would be largely swayed with the reinstatement of Comrade Philip Schweibel. Many feel that uh, it's a threat to the ambitions of whoever the political parties prefer as their candidate, regardless of the voting power in the hands of the people. Do you think that this reinstatement is indeed... A, a balance shaker in terms of what the party will garner in terms of power going into the final days of the campaign. I tell you, it is. This. So you feel this, this opposition this is because is, this restatement is a boost. So, so you feel that the current governor is opposing because he feels somewhat threatened. Yeah, he feels threatened. You know what? Let me tell you. That's what I'm telling you. There is a fight within the house. And with this statement, they are able to garner all those aggrieved people. And they are moving to one point, And they are all going to APC. That is the yeah, challenge so before the governor. Way. And I tell you, as we move towards the, as the days get closer, you will see more, even more of the appointees of this governor. They will leave him. All right, now let's get back him. to Mr. Andrew. We've had the position of Comrade Abdul Wahab, who feels that the reinstatement is somewhat of a threat to Governor Obaseki and the party's position as it looks to Ghana, its final momentum before September 21st. Uh, do you think this is indeed a threat or the issues are well blown out of hand? It's, it's well blown out of hand. It can never be a threat. <laughs> Philip Shaibu is not even a threat to, to even people in his world. Check history now. Philip Shaibu has never won his world. Philip Shaibu, do you think, even as we stand right and the votes that will still come out from a donut, is the same vote you're still going to get from a donut with or without Philip Shaibu? Philip Shaibu is just a normal noise maker. He's just a normal uh, vocal activist like you and I. He's an orator like Oshomole. Oshomole did more than what he's doing now in 2015, in 2019. He did more than 2020. He did more than what he did now. But the adult people came out with a protest vote. So all these things that Philip Shaibu is just ranting up and down. We're not even giving me. We're not even worried. You are, you, Mr. Wahab knows that Philip Shaibu cannot win Oshomole in this LGA. 
Yeah. But he has joined the Shemola who got more vote. He used to get vote. Those no. votes will not be added to one party. No. Yes. No. The he used to get vote. vote. But those same votes, yes. even if it is one vote, is important. He will add it to the that of everything. The vote from don't know should be accredited to Shemola, not even finish. But so finish is not even a threat. He's not even in the scheme of... He's not a man who will be able to fill that. <laughs> Why are you people really worried now? Man. Leave him now. Leave him alone. Why are you worried? Why are you worried? Press leave him. If it doesn't matter, leave him now. Don't talk about yeah, him. You are even making him more popular people, by what you are doing. Philip no, Shabu is important, is significant in this election. And he's going, no, that is the mistake you all make. He's an, he's an, he's an impeached deputy governor. So what, politics, what value is he bringing to the table? Well, yeah, by your own statement, he's impeached. But by the law, he's the deputy governor of those state. By the law, as he speaks, by the judgment that he substituted, he is the deputy governor of Edo State. Except you are telling me that you don't know the law. Will he force himself on us? The Edo people said they don't want it. Even people from Edo know said they don't want him. Nobody says so. It is the governor that Sigourney removed him as deputy governor. The House of Assembly is the remote, is the is the governor has the remote control to control the House of Assembly. That's one of That's the He has the remote to control the House of Assembly. Let me get Mr. Andrew's position. Mr. Andrew, that is an assertion yeah. that most Nigerians continue to carry despite the separation of power ideologies and the autonomy of the three arms of government at the state level. Much like Comrade Abdul Wahaba said, many Nigerians continue to believe that the legislative arm doesn't have its autonomy. They are merely just... More like he said, in the hands of the governor. Is, is this the situation in Edo states? Yes. Is there a lack of state house of assembly autonomy? If, if, if I want to, if I want, you know, we always stand on the on the side <laughs> of of of, uh, of of activists. You know, the truth remains, uh, the judicial system, the, the the separation of power in Nigeria is not as effective as the way it should be, as the way it's being taught. Ideally, like if I if you watch my most channels, I always said that look, ideally the press. Let, let's use national for example. The president is, a, is the president of the executive arm. The president of the Senate should be the president of the, of the legislative arm. But the chief should be the president of the, of the judiciary arm. You understand? Ideally. But, you know, in this part of the world, our democracy is still evolving. Same thing goes to the state level. Ideally, each of the arm of government should be independent, should be able to practice effectively in order for us to have efficiency and effectiveness at the special of power and, and uh, uh, distribution of democratic principles and dividends to the people. But you know, reverse is the case in this our uh, dispensation. It's not really anybody's fault. It's just because our democracy is still evolving. I know over time, uh, by the time we begin to have governors who put the interest of the people first, okay, just like Jonathan. Jonathan have always had the interest that the people should come for The life of Nigeria matters above his personal in the parochial interest. So if we can stand this ground, look, every arm of government should be independent. I did it. I think we will have we have a good Africa. It's not about Nigeria alone. It's, across, it's called across Africa. Africa is sitting on good, but we are still hungry. Nigeria is literally just like somebody who is in the kitchen and there is food everywhere, but the person is hungry. The situation we are right now is a situation of somebody who is using a 17th century weapon to fight 21st century war. Yes, and that's the kind of situation we are in this country. So it's just uh, it's an unfortunate situation we have to find ourselves. But we that speak for the voiceless, like Comrade Abu Wahab, myself, who are member of Sports Society Organization and Comrade, we keep preaching the good news, we keep trying our best, we keep speaking truth to power. But we are all of us have political affiliates, we have political loyalty, but that's not stopping us from practicing our comradeship and our activism. When it needs comes to rise for us to speak truth to power, we speak to power in response to the world. The Comrade Abu Wahab, I know. Even though his, his party wins tomorrow, if they misbehave, he will tell them the way it is. And of that's course. the same way I am. And that's the way we were trained of as course. student union, as civil society organization. You can have political affiliation, but when your political party misbehave, you will tell them where they are wrong. Of and course. that's the way it stands. If you watch my channels at TV yesterday, for yesterday, I had a comrade that was with me, one of their youth leaders. The guy spoke to the power. He said, look, presidency is not trying. It's also waste. And the channels that were like, this is what we expect from every Nigeria. And this is what we stand as comrades. Of course. We don't pamper evil. We don't pamper things Honestly. that the government is not doing because our, our political affiliation is there. No, because our name is at stake. Because the government will come and go. But we, the comrades, will still remain in the streets. Of course. That's how we're different from every other person. Of course. So, so I believe that, look, the of power is not well practiced in this part of the world. And I think every government should allow us our assembly to stay on it, it, it to be independent. Judiciary should be independent. I don't even want government should be the one appointing who becomes the speaker or government appointing who becomes the chief judge. No, it should even be the people's vote. 
they should throw it up to let the people vote who becomes the speaker. It can just be my that okay, this region should produce the speaker, but let there be voting within the region yes. and let them bring up the speaker. So I think from that angle, we'll be able to have a better democratic democratic practice and principle that will benefit the mm -hmm. average masses. Now, now Mr. Andrew, you're, you're yeah, spoken yeah. well. We'll come back to you to get your parting shots in a bit. But before we come back to you and you get together your thoughts with your message to Edo people ahead of a match to the polls on September 21st, let's get your thoughts to the people of Edo State. Much of what he has said, the separation of powers to ensure that the people have a voice, not just in the emergence of elected officers in the executive arm of government, but in the judicial arm of government, as well legislative. as legislative arm of government. What's your message to the Edo people ahead of the polls? Ahead of the polls, I just have one message for Edo people. Vote for the man you know. Vote for the one who has been there for you. Vote for the one who is always there. Me, money, day and night. When you call, he's there. He has always been there even before he came into governance. He has always been there as a private citizen. When you have challenges, he comes. He told us a story about his sister who died because of water, you know, lack of water. And since then, he has been able to make sure that in that whole area, there's water. These are the kind of people who have passion for the improvement of the livelihood of the people and the development of the community. That is the kind of governor Edo people need. Senator Monde of Kwebulu. Well, thank you very much, Comrade Abdul Wahab. But I'll get your thoughts. More, more, more than just a direction in terms of the viability, viability of whatever candidates you prefer, but in terms of the power the Edo people have, I much agree with what you said when you're making your comments on separation of power. Many Nigerians till tomorrow don't feel that there is enough power in this storm. They feel that undue, uh, uh, voter inducements, election manipulation, intimidation can still scuttle the voting process. Your message now is to the people of Edo State. How much power is there uh, in the Beautiful. The I make uh, a card is out. We want the Edo people to go out and take their car right now. People that register for, for their PVC, people that did PV renewal, uh, this is an opportunity for me to tell them they should go out and get their PVC. The, the card is already out, so everybody should go to their various uh, LGA uh, uh, and pick up their card on one hand. Then on the other hand, the Edo people should be, Edo people have always known that, that look, I've been on, on, on media engagement since 2015 on the Dog Matters, series of media, both BBC, CNN, and a whole lot of others. And I've made the Dog people to understand, look, the power to determine who becomes your governor is in your hand. Vote will always count in Edo State. Edo is one state you cannot win. You find it difficult to win the election. It's somehow difficult. It's not. It's a very volatile state. There are some things you can do in Edo State and go scot free. You cannot do it in Edo State and go scot free. Mister, I have no this thing I'm talking of about. Course, there are course. some things you can do in another state. You go scot free, but you can't do it in Edo State and go scot free. It will not work. Yes. It's a very volatile state. It's a very sensitive state. That's why you see any government that comes on board is always careful on how he manages situation of state because everything we do in Edo State, we always do it SS. Everything we do, we want to do bad, we do it SS. We want to do good, we do it SS. We want to do SLM, we do it SS. We want to vote Kapatu. So this election, people should go out and vote the best candidate that has the following criteria. One, competence. Two, character. Three, credibility. Four, empathy. Five. In fact, I don't even know how to even qualify it again. Then I vote all. The place of equity, justice, and fairness should be put into consideration. But the most important are the first criteria that I listed. Pick a PVC, your vote will count. Lions and tigers will not have their place in this Edo state. We know when, that we, have already, we have a zoo in Edo state. If they feed their lions and tigers, we'll put them where lions and tigers belongs to. Because somebody controls the zoo. And lions and tigers doesn't have the place where human beings stay. So we'll turn them to where they should belong to. We are not going to allow, allow lions and tigers to have their space in the place of Edo state. We are stakeholders in this project called Edo State. We are shareholders in this project called Edo State. Edo State belongs to all of us. This is our father's land. This is our mother's land. And we will determine and determine who becomes the next governor, who is going to govern us. We are not going to use an instrument weapon to fight the 21st century world. No. We are not going to allow the Joker to assume the corridor power. No. Also, the Avenue is not a place where you go and, and loot money for political leaders. It will not happen in Edo State. That era has passed where we use state government resources to fund political leaders, to fund their families. That era is gone where you use state government resources to begin to, to empower individuals and they have 20 stomach. No, All right, thank you very much. We are the era where we're going to build a door of our dream, where there's going to be an investment destination in Africa. And it will be the business hub of Africa. We're going to revolutionize the those states, and you'll be proud of those states. And those states are going to be the next Dubai. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Andrew. Very patriotic about your state, and evidently why. We appreciate you for making our time to grace the program.
Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, Comrade Abdul Wahab, I must ex extend our many gratitudes for making our time to objectively speak to issues at hand. We appreciate you as well. Thank you very much.